See, this uh, is the thing. You can't have a serious discussion with these guys. This is the thing. Gotta, although I understand that the fodder is there. The fodder is there. It's a sex toy killer. I get it. But, uh, you know, what can I say? I'm, um, but uh, but here we are. We do have a specific special purpose tonight. We are going to launch a Steve Gosney's new crime novel. We'll be talking about that as we go. Oh, my goodness. How'd you get my picture there, Steve? <laughs> Wait, is that a guy or a chick? No, see, look, come on. See, death penalty desires passion, lust, and murder. Yeah, but I don't know if I should be aroused by the boob in the picture. Is that a guy or a girl? Oh, that's a guy. Come on. You're a, I hope that's, well, of course, you are gay, so I guess. Look, no, that yeah. I've seen I've seen tits bigger than that on a guy Camelot's so pretty <laughs> well, bulbous. <laughs> yes. Well, that's I not a child's to, hand, they, is it in that picture? <laughs> they have the airbrush. It's not Joe Biden's there. autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> This weird. Yeah, so thank you for letting I and I asked you specifically, I said, you know, this this is a Nick kind of book. And so yeah. I'm like, you need to do the launch. And you were so enthusiastic and so kind. And I said, who else should do this with me but Mr. Branco, who's my buddy, who you two kind of got me into this whole writing splurge and kind of got me into this. So the, all these <laughs> back here. Between you two, you two are guilty. You're the reason for all of this. Yeah, well, thank you. It was uh, when you asked me, I was like, oh, a book launch. It must be a Tuesday. And then, <laughs> well, we thought we were taking the leash off a of Chihuahua, Steve. We didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> and then, uh, and then you're like, no, this is this is your kind of book. It has it has all of the elements that you like. And I was like, ooh, now I actually am intrigued. Um, I see Camelot in the chat, by, by the way, it says every now and then I hear some kind of some kind words whilst not expecting it. <laughs> Oh, you got A J M E C D. We went out. We went out to Orlando, and she got the first. Well, she. I will say she got a the first copy, of the hardcover, and of the. Uh, she's the first one to have read it front to back. So oh. she actually read the book. And by the way, both of you are getting a Death Penalty Desires book in the mail. Um, we were going to do this a little later, but you said let's do it tonight, and I'm like, okay, free tonight. So you're both getting a copy in the mail. But yeah, she read it and she gave it a big thumbs up. She couldn't put it down. We uh, from ten thirty to four a.m. in the morning. She read the book front to cover to cover. Damn, yeah, um, I do exhausted. have to say it, <laughs> it's good that you had a woman read the book because they do learn to do things front to back. So that's very helpful <laughs> that she read the book front to back, straight in, in one shot. Uh, if you give it to a guy, you never know if he's going to read it. Uh, you know, front to back, back to front, side to side. Uh, very messy, very very uncoordinated. But women know what the way. Say, you know what, what? Where where am I exactly? What what's see? I mean, I'm inter I haven't been just in here a, a while. It was a compliment. Is it? Yeah, of course. Okay, Andrew, I'm am I getting saying. complimented? Is this Andrew wasn't involved in this? <laughs> yes, but it's he's you. the voice of reason in here. You see? <laughs> am I? <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Well, so, and, uh, and the book was actually inspired by the legal vices. Spice Squad chat because people nice. don't, you know, this book, I wrote this book basically in 10 days. Now it was finished in 30 days from, from first set word to hardcover copy in my hand from 30 days. And it was, people say, well, how did you do that? It was kind of a bolt of lightning out of nowhere. What was happening? I was working on two major cases, a death penalty appeal, as well as people know the Virgilio Aguilar Mendez case that I was involved in. And both those cases resolved themselves at the same time. And, and then all of a sudden my decks were completely clear of work, but I was operating at this massive kind of work load level. When you have a death penalty appeal, it's very heavy. And then I, so I was goofing around in the vice squad chat and somebody said, you should, you know, cause you I write jokes, you write all these books and they're like, you should write a book called death penalty desires. Right. And I thought that was so funny. Cause it's, I'm saying, oh yeah, the hero appellate lawyer with the chest and all. Like I was laughing because I'm thinking about this kind of chick fantasy romance novel thing. Yeah. But, and so, but then it just kind of I put about four or five ideas together and it just came out. It's just like boom, you know, it was like a lightning bolt. The muse struck. And uh, and I was sort of at a peak efficiency and I and I blasted it out and got it done. So it was fun. <laughs> Sounds like a soft porn book. <laughs> it is, you know. If look, I was writing it. I just blasted it out. Got done. <laughs> oh, see, look, a fan see, off see, after that one. Okay, a, I know where I am. Big endeavor. Okay. It's a big endeavor. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Ooh, ooh look Caitlyn at that. Jenner on the cover with a strong chin and a strong underboob showing. Very well, see, you are, you are, It's interesting here because you are actually showing the PG-rated soft cover. That's what happens when wow. I click on the link on your. That's look. No, go, go, go up to shop. 
Look, go back. Look. Yeah, this is the this is the opening page. Okay, look, your... keep scroll. Look what's this one? The pink one. R rated. It's got a Wait, nipple. Why do, you, why do you have the PG one it. here? Whose hand is this? <laughs> That's it's like a, that... it's like a child's hand. It's so creepy. No, it's a female <laughs> hand. You know, oh, okay. All right. You see in the orange. Who's wearing this puffy shirt? Why is she still wearing clothes? Book yet? You need to read the book. I do. I do need to read the book. Does it have pictures? You've got one on your way. Both of you all have one on your way. By the way, Um, the the no, there's there's an R-rated version and there's a PG-rated version. The PG the the definitive edition is the R-rated soft cover, which is you're showing right here. Okay, Um, that's it, and it's only available at SteveGosney.com. The PG version, which is suitable for work. And learning, and which will actually be a textbook that I will use to teach death penalty appellate lawyers. In addition, as as an entertaining way to learn, um, that PG <laughs> version is available on Amazon Kindle Unlimited for free. So if you have Kindle don't offer it to the Colorado Public Defender's Office. <laughs> Look, yeah, guys, I'll, I'll, guys, please. Steve has been drinking. If you learn from this book, you're gay. So that's all I have to say. Like, go read the book. It's yeah, salacious. It's Are wonderful. you the expert on gayness now? You, literally, yes. Well, apparently. <laughs> that's a rumor. <laughs> rumor. Hey, I've been there. I know what it's like to be on the receiving Me too. End. The first hour of the show, there was somebody in the comments calling me gay relentlessly. It's it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yes, Look, what I'm happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now. I love seeing you guys there. I love seeing so much of you. <laughs> in Vegas all the time. <laughs> Just kidding, well, of course. No, look... Uh, I dude, I I can't wait for this to actually come uh, to my house because I want to read this book. Um, it's it's easy for uh, for you, Steve. It's easy for you to create articles and uh, and philosophical books about what to do, what you've learned over the years, how you apply it, what law means, how you how law meshes with uh, morality and ethics. It's yeah. easy for you to do that. You've done it uh, multiple times. You do it very very well. Um, Prepare is a great book, by the way. Everybody with the forward by Nick Ricada, your <laughs> one and only, uh, who surprised the hell out of Steve by actually writing a forward. And he went, oh, you did read the book. And I was like, well, most of it. Yes. Yeah, but, but, uh, you did a good job on the forward. It's, it's a, it's a fill There's a piece of faith. There's a bit on, there's a bit of preparation, preparation, and there's faith. And there's also, um, there's also um, a, a meditation on the, the idea of individual rights, which I know that one of the reasons I ask you to do the forward is because I think you're a big believer in the First Amendment and the end of the idea of individual freedom. And uh, and so you focused on that part of the book and I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, but of course, notice that there's no forward on this book. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed. You know, I, uh, I but I will say that I would have written the. F- yeah, 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 no, yeah. keep talking. Careful, no, I'm, I'm careful. Here. Fine. The uh, death penalty desires. I'm very happy. This came out of just kind of nowhere. It was an inspired book, but it's interesting because I wrote the structure of it. I, I, there's a death penalty trial and this whole concept, and I developed that. And then the two main characters, which you see on the cover, which is uh, the heroic appellate lawyer on the front with the chest that's modeled after my chest, of course, and the uh, the lady in the orange jumpsuit who is the uh, the object of the passion lust. And uh, the, these these love interests here, the philosophical part of this book came right at the end, and I really I'm really pleased with how it came out. It's it, the thread of the character arcs of the two main characters. It's not just I mean obviously there's a salacious aspect here that gets your interest, but there's also a a character arc about learning about a meditation about. Um, well, uh, let me just, I'll just go ahead and share it because. Okay. The, yeah, the, exactly. the, they're the part that the part that's downplayed in the PG version is mm-hmm. a dominance and submission theme. Ooh, it's 50 now we're getting to it. <laughs> oh, do I get to judge your BDSM commentary? That could be. Wait, yeah, maybe you know. Maybe I'm not going to like to hear what you have to say when you read Steve, it. But... I'm I'm not going to ask about your field research into the BDSM sections of this book. How did you? How did you determine with the dominance and submission aspects? All the, all the subs end up being prosecutors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to give it away. Bronco, that right was the burn place. right there. That was great. No, it's, um, <laughs> I don't know. You rattled me. <laughs> no, the, 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 I actually, we had a client who was a very submissive and agreeable female. And I think that there's a, 
there's a lot of women that come at it from that perspective that think that that is a protection, that they are safe from the criminal justice system. They let the man lead and they sit back in the shadows and follow and are passive and think that that is somehow going to, they're going to escape any kind of consequence for that. And I, I thought it was fascinating because that person that I'm thinking about, that was a former client, uh, ended up in prison for 10 years. And, and so it's like, well, how can that happen? How can somebody who's passive and submissive end up at odds with the criminal justice system? Because most of the people that I represent are very aggressive, disagreeable kind of folks like me and Brackett, right? Um, how is it <laughs> it's somebody, true. <laughs> how many somebody is so agreeable get in trouble with the law? And so I, I thought about that concept and I put that into the book as um as sort of a, a character arc and it's a meditation for for women really it's a, a book i really wrote it for women because uh to understand if you are agreeable and submissive where that is properly placed and located in your life and not to expand that into everything because that's also a recipe for disaster so there's, there's some morality and lessons in here that are sort of subtle and deep sea, which is typical. I don't like being too heavy handed. Um, well, yeah, Steve, it, it's obviously written for women. Just look at the cover. I mean, yeah, if it was is, written for men, it would have to start Dear Florida Supreme Court. I never thought this would happen to me, but <laughs> I've just got to suggest that uh, whatever, whoever's on the cover is not heavy handed at all. But speaking of things that expand things, I do have to welcome. Uh, Bri uh, well, I don't know how long I've got it. Uh, guest of the stream, what's up? Bye. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, man. Steve, Steve, Steve said he needed the maritime law, something about a book full of semen or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's even I didn't mean to corrupt this man, but I did, apparently. It's a feature, it's peel apart pages, <laughs> right? Scratch and sniff the Steve Gosby book. Look at so it. Penalty I've desired been... scratch and sniff pop up book. That's what we need. <laughs> oh, god, that'd be great. That's the only fans rated version. Uh, and only in hardcover. You're At probably getting it, get it in schools. <laughs> uh, I I forgot to do this, guys. Uh, to the chat. This is available at stevegosney.com. Stevegosney.com. You can buy his other books there too. But if you're yeah. looking for the TNA book that Steve wrote, you gotta buy this one, where you can learn about BDSM and murder. Steve, did you um? Did you read about that case? I, I, it had to be Florida, but I don't know if it was, but it should have been. In spirit, it was. Did you read about that case where the guy was convicted, or well, he was charged with the uh, murder of his girlfriend who died of asphyxiation, and his defense was, my penis is so large that she literally choked to death on it, and I'm willing, and his lawyer said, and my client, your honor, is willing to put it literally on the table in front of the jury to show them just how massive this this thing is did you hear I, about the I'm case i'm surprised that you're aware of this case but i'm sadly i am not i'm i'm just so glad i jumped in after we stopped talking about all the important constitutional law stuff and just uh, i i would suggest we make the hand on on the girl a little bit bigger on the next publishing just, <laughs> i think it's really good i think my buddy grok did a great job on the cover i think it's perfect Do you and, know how uh, big this dude is this guy's like seven six he's no he's like he's like he's like uh, like Draper. <laughs> Draper that's a really that. tiny hand though it kind of looks odd <laughs> Come on, you guys see there it's always projection all of this is projection <laughs> well i didn't create the cover <laughs> Look, i'm just saying that the lawyer's big he's not like five three that's all he's not like a little shrimpy guy that's a that's a big beefy lawyer in a big beefy suit and that's a that's a full-size woman's hand that's what i went to i don't know why everybody else is like well i don't know about that that looks like uh that looks like a clinton uh pointy or whatever that's you have a very petite wife steve nick I do, I do. She's tiny, dainty, dainty fingers. So to me, it's not surprising at all. Well, and the I will say the lead character also is a real <laughs> dominant alpha male. So you know, this is he is. It, it's it's a. I really want people's impressions. So please do. If at least if nothing else, go to Amazon Kindle Unlimited, download the book, and read the PG version of the book. If not, it's free. If you have Amazon Unlimited, so is Death Penalty Debates as well as The Summer Friend are all up on Kindle right now. So you can get all of those on Kindle Unlimited. If you want the salacious R-rated version, you can only get that at stevegosney.com. So that's what the meaning, that's the reason for the season. And uh, thank you for, for 
for going there. Steve, are you going to do a live a live reading of the book, like on no. an OnlyFans channel, or absolutely, absolutely not? <laughs> I thought oh, about man. that because I will definitely not read this book online. How's that? What? Oh, you got to get Gilbert Godfrey to do it. <laughs> He's and, dead. Then, <laughs> and then he went to the trial. He was wearing his garter underneath his suit. It was beautiful and luscious. Like, could you? <laughs> That's be terrible. It, it was, I was Gilbert Godfrey was alive, though. Wait, he died? Yeah. Oh, did he die from that guy's giant penis? Probably not, but uh, yeah, he, he, he died a couple of months ago. <laughs> Those are his last, last words, gack gack. <laughs> See, this uh, is the thing. You can't have a serious discussion with these guys. This is the thing. Gotta, although I understand that the fodder is there. The fodder is there. It's a sex toy killer. I get it. But... Uh, you know, what can I say? I'm, look, this is a serious discussion. Uh, without a hint of irony, I am very excited for the book. I am. Because I think uh, people get this dry impression of the legal profession. And even uh, you go rosy-eyed into law school, you're like, ah, I'm going to go help them poor. When, like, oh, I don't know what liberal weird thing you guys went for. I yeah, went no, to be I, a, I'm going to be a corporate lawyer. <laughs> I was going to go be a lawyer for the banks. I'm like, oh, I'm going to fucking evict all these people. I hate all them. a foreclosure of houses. Bring it to me. That's what I wanted to do to protect the banks because banks are funny. And then I was like, but they live there. Um, and so I didn't want to do that. Once I got into law, I was like, I don't actually want to represent banks. I kind of hate them. And uh, I really just want to say fuck you to the government. That's what I want to do. And so then I changed my perspective. But you go in and you're like, you have an, an idea about how the world works, how people are, what murderers are, what criminals are, really. And then you go practice and you're like, oh, actually, criminals are kind of like normal. And a lot of them aren't even criminals. Like, don't get me wrong. They're really bad people out there. But a lot of people who are charged with a crime are just normal people who had a bad day there's a bad circumstance, whatever they're caught into. And you go, oh, shit. Uh, even if they're guilty, you're like, oh, this system is steamrolling good people who had a bad time. And the punishment that they're receiving is not consummate to the damage they may have done. Why is the system like this? Right. And you'll go from someone who is like, you know, holding a gun at someone's face and taking their money. And then you're talking to them 10 seconds later and they're telling you about the last video game they played or what they were doing this weekend. You're like, wow, that sounds like everybody I know. The system's you seem normally insane. Well, the, I mean, the pendulum just swings from, uh, hey, a guy's got a joint, put him in prison for 50 years, <laughs> and then it swings all the way to, oh, he murdered a family of eight? Well, it just leave, release him on his own recognizance. It's fine. <laughs> well, the, the idea here is that, you know, you, you're a lot, of, all of us here that are on this side, I mean, obviously we know that there's a, there's a market. There's a lot of people that like watching jury trials. They like watching yes. criminal law. And, uh, and so I said, I am going to give you the packed into one trial, all the best stuff from my career in a fictionalized way. But most of the incidents that you will read about in this are real incidents that I have experienced in my trial career packed into one comprehensive trial, jury trial. So if you like watching jury trials, this is one of your, this is a book that will give you all kinds of interesting angles on it, including the thinking of the lawyers, the thinking of the judges, the thinking of the prosecutors, uh, the clients, their experiences, how things unfold, the personalities involved, all of these things I bring to bear in this novel. So um, I, a lot of it is real law and real incidents that come out of my, my experience and background. So I, it is, it's targeting the people that are watching this channel right now. This is the book I wrote for you. It's in, I, I'll be. Fa I really want to hear what people's feedback. I know AJ Me in the chat here. Uh, she she's read it already. She's read this the R rated version of the book. I'm fascinated to hear because there are some subtle messages in the book that are uh, theological. Philosophical. A lot, there's a lot of subtle things that I, you know, when when I write these things, they come out of the kind of the the muse hits me and they they kind of flow, right? It just comes out. But um, when I come back and I look at it later, I see that there's themes that are developed over time throughout the book that I wasn't even aware were there when I when I actually wrote it. It's really an interesting process of writing. And uh, I, I, I loved writing this book. It was really a, a lot. It was one of the most fun books to write. In fact, you know, people say, how can Gosney, this Christian guy, write a book about dominance and submission? But one of the my, my most enjoyable 
uh, enjoyable characters to write was the guy named Hi Z, who is this this rapper thug guy, and uh, who is who's just so opposite of me. It's it's not even funny. And actually, Will Parker, you know, uh, Andrew knows Will. Uh, he's sort of the inspiration in the book. He's kind of in there. There's a kind of a little. There's a lot of inside jokes for people who watch YouTube in this, in this book also. And so I kind of threw salt at it with some of that. But it's amazing when you write things how you're not aware of what you're even writing. You're just letting the muse speak to you and it comes out the way it comes out. And so, but I'm very, I had so much fun writing this and and Legal Vices, you weren't here when I told you, I, you don't really know how your chat inspired this book because David Nelson, who's in the chat, he got me going one time. He was in the Vice Squad chat because I was hanging out in the Vice Squad, a great chat he has. And, uh, and they, it, it just kind of, it got me laughing and relaxed so much that it just opened up those floodgates of creativity. So thank you for Jeff. This is another, I'm glad that Jeff showed up because <laughs> keep, keep, keep my name out your mouth. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm sending you a, I'm sending you a, uh, Please. talk about the book, tell people why they should buy it. I'll be right back. Yes. And so this is, it is a very, um, this you know, book is uh, not a rum. Uh, this book is so basically yeah, we we can blame my I mean credit my chat for this book. Okay, this book should have burka. Okay, well I don't know what's going on up here, but uh, yeah. So get get the R rated version at stevegosney.com, and the, the the definitive copy is the R rated soft, soft cover. There is a PG version version if you want to read the story and you're grossly offended by by depictions of of um, sex and violence. Uh, there's about, 50, I'd say it's about 15 pages shorter, the PG version. Um, but you're, you're losing a, a, a thread of one of the themes that goes through the book, basically the dominance and submission theme. But other than that, it will be fine. And, and it's really a meditation on how somebody who is super submissive can still get in trouble with the law. And, and, and there's a lot of lessons like, I'm just going to agree. I'm going to, the cops are my friends. Why don't I tell you? Let me confess to you. Let me tell you what happened. And Andrew, you know that as defense lawyers, when that, when the, when the client's talking to the police, you're just pulling your hair out. You're like, why are you doing that? And this, this is a good example of that. There's a, there's an interrogation scene <laughs> and it's like, well, the cops are on my side, right? They're, they're, I'm just going to be agreeable. That's always a good strategy. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, of course. Hey, well, that one, that it's almost as bad cop. when the clients are talking to the lawyers. I mean, you know, if, yeah. if, if 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 above the client's head there was like a buzzer and a big word like lie, lie, <laughs> the clients oh. are talking to me. I'm hearing that lie, lie, lie buzzer go off like like a like a typewriter. <laughs> I mean, the clients the clients lie to their own lawyers all the time. It's horrific. But of course, when they're talking to the cops, is when they really bury themselves. Well, any because you can't take that back. Yeah. And and anything you say, the thing people don't realize, the things that you say, if it hurts you, it will come in. If it helps you, right. it will not. Phrasing. It will not. Right. Are we, are we talking about the book still? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's in the book. There's Is a, that there's one of the lines? If it hurts you, it'll come in. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I'm, I'm just telling you, <laughs> if you're speaking to the police that will that comes into evidence at a jury trial and this this is the real law there's a framework of real law behind this i you know I, one of the reasons people love my cousin vinny a lot of the lawyers love it is because it's true to life yeah yeah it's great best best law movie ever made right so that's what this is this is a real jury trial in the middle i mean it's fictionalized but it's got the the framework of law in it and there's a uh, a sexy love story buried in it. So how can you not? So love Steve, that? I have an idea for your next book. Oh dear! I think it should be on tenant law, tenant law, like rental property law for yeah, chapter uh, for, and... for, for poor but highly attractive young men. You could call it hobosexual. Dear penthouse, I went to collect my rent, and you'll never believe what happened. <laughs> well, what can I say to that? Nathan, Nathan is asking about the R-rated soft cover and ebook are available at stevegosney.com. The PG-rated Death Penalty <laughs> Desired minus the Lust <laughs> is available on Amazon exclusively. Well, what's Desire minus Lust? I mean, that's just yes, that, well, that's, desires. You need to have lust. 
Well, okay. Well, then you you're an R-rated kind of guy. I I, I knew that, so I sent you the R-rated version. <laughs> oh, thanks. 